This video will discuss the E-Series pump cover rotation for different bypass valve options. All pump repair and maintenance should be conducted by authorized and trained personnel only. Be sure to consult all applicable safety codes and company procedures when doing so. Make sure the pump is completely depressurized before performing any pump maintenance. This operation should only be conducted by qualified and trained personnel. This video is intended as a supplemental guide for bypass configuration for the Smith Model E-Series pumps only. Be sure to review all literature that pertains to the E-Series pump found on our website, including AL47 titled E-Series Bypass Valve Recommendations and Warning Sheet AL201. Most Smith EG1Z and ECHC series pumps are shipped with a cover pipe plug in the 9 o'clock position. In this position, an external differential pressure bypass valve must be used, such as our WW series adjustable bypass valves. Never operate the pump in the 9 o'clock position unless using an external bypass valve. The external bypass valve should be adjusted to at least 15 psi lower than the internal bypass relief valve inside the pump. Most Smith E-Series pumps contain a preset bypass valve setting of 90 psi differential pressure. We also have a 110 psi differential pressure setting available. A 1 half inch or larger external bypass valve is recommended for our EG1Z pump. A 3 quarter inch or larger external bypass valve is recommended for our ECHZ pump. Make sure the bypass line going back to the tank is the same size as the plugged bypass outlet on the cover of the pump. Always route the external bypass valve line to the vapor phase of the supply tank. For applications using the pump intermittently, the end user can use the internal bypass valve as an external bypass valve by changing the position of the cover plug to the 12 o'clock position. In order to do this, remove the 12 cap screws holding the cover onto the main housing using a 9 16 inch socket wrench. If the pump is installed in the pipework, make certain it is properly depressurized. Remove all components from the pump. Next, remove any old sealant from the cover and main housing using a razor blade and rag. Be sure not to make contact with the cover o-ring when using the razor blade. Replace this o-ring if the pump is over 10 years old. Replace all pump components. Now, apply new sealant very sparingly to the main housing only and be sure to include the lands around the gear set. Be sure the o-ring is installed in the cover and make sure the strainer screen is tucked in below the face of the main housing. Position the cover so the bypass plug is now in the 12 o'clock position over the bypass valve cartridge. Hand tighten all eight short cap screws, then properly torque one cap screw. Now torque its opposing cap screw and then so on. Torque to 20 or 25 foot-pounds. Remove the pipe plug. Mount the pump back onto the motor using the four longer cap screws and torque to 20 or 25 foot-pounds. There is no order of torque for the longer cap screws. Be sure to route the bypass line back to the vapor side of the supply tank. Size the bypass line to the same size as the bypass cover port where the cover pipe plug once was. Your pump is now bypassing externally using the bypass valve cartridge contained inside the pump. Be sure to consult NFPA 58 and other applicable safety codes when installing any bypass line or other pipework. For information on how to replace the shaft seal assembly or for other pump maintenance, please see additional videos posted on our website. Thank you for watching this short video on the bypass valve configuration for E-Series pumps. For more information, please visit www.smithpumps.com.